Okay, so this is a video on the next, starting the next chapter in your book, chapter 7. And the idea is, at this point, you all know how to graph trigonometric functions. You can use the unit circle. You can use right triangle, Sokotoa trigonometry, and all of that. You can solve applications like simple harmonic motion, and you can use double angle formulas and half angle formulas and all of that. So now we want to kind of look at things involve trigonometry from a different perspective. And the idea is you all know the equation of a circle. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's the equation of a circle centered at the origin. Radius r, you can manipulate it if you want to move it from the origin. But that's the basic one, centered at the origin. So essentially, for the unit circle, the equation would be x squared plus y squared equals 1. Circle centered at the origin of radius 1. And that's a pretty simple equation. I mean, you have two variables that are both squared and all that, but it's the simplest equation we can come up with for a circle. But let's face it, ultimately, later on in the semester, we'll talk about things called conic sections, like ellipses. Essentially, ellipses are circles that are stretched out. So their equations will be similar to those equations, but a little bit more complex. We'll talk about things called hyperbolas, which kind of look like this, which are similar, but a little bit more complex. And the problem is, when we have graphs like this, circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, other things we want to look at, well, they're not even functions, which means they can be a little bit challenging to write. Um, you can look at something like this. Let's see if I can draw this reasonably well. There we go. That's like a, a mass speed that would be a call of our four leaf rose petal curve. It doesn't matter. It's a nice, cool little picture. It's not remotely a function. And the question becomes, how do we come up with, how, how do we come up with equations for things that look like this that are not functions? You can come up with equations for it, but they can get really, really complex. It would be nice if we could find a way to simplify it. And that's actually what we're going to work on. And essentially, in order to simplify things, we have to completely reorient our thinking as far as how we graph things and kind of create a new coordinate system. You guys all know the x, y system. This is x, that's y, coordinate system and all of that. Now we're actually going to look at a whole new set of coordinates called polar coordinates. And essentially the idea is in the regular x-y system, x is horizontal, y is vertical. In order to plot a point, I tell you an x, a distance to go horizontally, I tell you a y, a distance to go vertically, and you end up at some point right there. In polar coordinates, circular coordinates, no way to say it, essentially you have an r and a theta. r is a radius, theta is an angle. So essentially, instead of telling you how far to go horizontally and then how far to go vertically, I'll tell you an angle to go, maybe this angle right here, that will be my theta, and then I'll tell you a distance to go along that angle your radius, say to right there. And the key point is, you will end up at the exact same point, whether I call it x, y, or whether I call it r and theta. There's my theta, there's my r. You end up at the same point, it's two different ways of saying the exact same thing. And our ultimate goal is to kind of understand how these polar coordinates work. We'll look at a few examples in a minute. And then to be able to go back and forth. Since they are two different ways of saying the same thing, we should be able to go back and forth from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates and from polar to rectangular. So, just to mess around with these a little bit. Suppose we have the equation, or the point 3 pi over 4. What that means is my radius is 3, my angle is pi over 4. So find my angle. Our angles come from the horizontal, just like always. 
Find the angle pi over 4, which you guys know is 45 degrees, and then go a distance 3 to say right there. And there's my point. Suppose we have the point 2, um, we'll go with 5 pi over 4. Well, let's see. Find the angle 5 pi over 4. That's 4 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4 is right here. And then I go with distance 2, which we'll say for the point sake of argument is right here. And then there's my point right there. So essentially, find the angle, which you all should be able to do, and then travel whatever the radius is. And that's your point. But suppose we have something like, we'll go with negative 2 pi over 2. So find my angle. I need different colored markers. My angle is pi over 2. That's 90 degrees. You all know it right here. And now my radius is negative 2. What does that mean? In the real world, radii can't be negative. You can't have a circle with a negative radius. It doesn't make sense. So for the purposes of this, what does it mean? Well, if you think about it, for this point right here, that has a radius of 3. If I wanted the same angle but a radius of 2, I would go to like this point right here. If I wanted the same angle with a radius of 1, I would go to that point right there. If I wanted the same angle with a radius of 0, I would go right here. So what if I wanted the same angle with a radius of negative 1? Well, logically, if this is 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1 should be over here. And essentially, if you have a negative radius, you find the angle that you want, and then you go in the opposite direction. So for this one, negative 2 pi over 2. We found my angle, pi over 2. Radius of negative 2 means instead of going up, I go down, and I end up over there. So, one or two more, and then we're going to move on. Uh, let's see. Suppose I want to find the point negative 1, 3 pi over 2. Uh, that's no fun. We'll go with 2 pi over 3. So let's see. 2 pi over 3, you guys all know the angle. That's 120 degrees. So right about there. So there's my theta. Now I need negative 1. Negative 1 sends me in the opposite direction, which means I go over here. And there's my point over in the fourth quadrant. Again, you don't draw all these lines when you're finding the point. I just care about the point. I'm just drawing them so we can see them. One more. Negative 2, negative pi over 4. Now both of them are negative. Let's see, what does a negative angle mean? We're using our angles starting from the horizontal like normal. These angles are positive. Negative angles mean go backwards. So go down here. So... Negative pi over 4 is negative 45 degrees, which will be right around here. Not exactly there. We'll just get this out of the way. Okay, so right around there. Now that's my theta right here. Now I do negative 2, which is going to send me in the opposite direction. And I'll end up way over there in the second quadrant. You guys are going to mess around with these for homework. Like once you've done a few of them, you should be fine. You just have to understand the principle of negative radii and negative angles, the negative angles we've done before. So again, a little bit of practice and you'll be fine. But, like I said, the ultimate goal is if the idea behind polar coordinates is well, to somehow make equations that wouldn't work very well in X and Y work better with these, with these points, we also understand, like I said earlier, that the rectangular coordinates and the polar coordinates are giving me the same point in the plane. It's just different ways of saying it. And ultimately, we want to be able to go back and forth between them. In order to do that, there's a couple of equations that we need. Some we have actually already seen, so they shouldn't be that big a deal. And we'll use them throughout the rest of the semester, so they're important to know. So for the sake of argument, suppose we have the unit circle right here. And now we know from the unit circle that if I pick a point right here, say the point x, y, we've already done this, you can draw a triangle here, there, 
There's your right angle. This is x, that's y. And then we know that on the unit circle, this is 1. So we get x squared plus y squared equals 1. Unit circle. Equation of a circle, radius of 1, center of the origin, all of that. But now, what would this point be in polar coordinates? Well, there's different ways we can do it. But let's see, if we, if we generalize this, and instead of having this radius be 1, just let it be r, well then my equation becomes x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And there we go. We immediately get a direct relationship between x and y, rectangular coordinates, and r, which is my polar coordinates. You can write it that way. If you want to solve it explicitly for r, you just square root both sides, and you get the square root of x squared plus y squared equals r. You can write it either way, as long as you understand you can go back and forth, you're fine. That one we should already know. That's just the definition of a circle. But what else can we do? Let's see. I know if these are polar coordinates, there's my r, there's my theta. We'll now try to find a way to relate them. We can just use our definitions of triangles. Let's see. If that's theta, y is opposite, and that's hypotenuse. So sine of theta equals opposite y over hypotenuse r. That's just the definition. We want to kind of isolate the rectangular coordinates on one side and the polar coordinates on the other. So in this case, multiply by r. And you get y equals r sine theta. This is one of the ones you have to memorize. We're going to use it repeatedly for the rest of the semester. But if we can do that, we can do the same thing with x and cosine. We get cosine theta equals x over r, or x equals r cosine theta. And then lastly, I suppose if we want to just relate the angles, we can use any of the trig we want. But if I know x and y and theta, then I can also say tan theta equals y over x, opposite over adjacent. And again, all of these are just the definitions we already know from the trig we've done. We're just, again, rewriting them like we did at the beginning of the semester in terms of x and y, and using this r for my radius. Essentially, though, we need to know this equation right here, tan theta equals y over x, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and then this one right here. And like I said, you can learn either one of those because they're the same. And the bulk of the work that we do now, and for a large portion of the rest of the semester, will center on knowing those little equations right there, and then being able to algebraically manipulate them and implement them in problems. This video is pretty much too long because of the restrictions on YouTube. I'm going to make one more where I, sol where I quickly solve out a few problems so you'll have enough information to do your homework.